my name's Todd Vennard, and I'm an ARC evangelist with Microsoft. And I'm here today at the world famous Betty Crocker Kitchens, where we've been looking at a very cool application that the folks here at General Mills have been producing around Betty Crocker. And I'm here with Edgar Dorn. I'm a Danek Tank Lead for the uh, project that's working on the backend services for the application. Excellent. So this is a killer WPF app, but it doesn't exist without your services. I mean, so can you tell me about what those services provide this application? Well, when the application is doing any kind of communications to look for recipes or do any, any uh, data retrieval, it talks to our services in the back end. Um, one of the, we had a lot of complexity with it, obviously we had to deal with issues with um, load and how to manage you know, the, a lot of, the number of users, how to deliver the recipes in a proper manner to the application because those recipes change. We're always adding new recipes and modifying them. So we had to make sure that it was you know, scalable and it was a system that would be able to um, um, update and keep the applications as fresh as possible at all times. So um, what, what technologies did you use to actually develop those services? Um, the actual the back-end stuff is a written um, usual, usual visual basic .NET, um, and it uses um, a lot of, it's actually an XML um, distribution. So it's uh, plain old XML data that we're actually sending back and forth. So we try to keep it as simple as possible because our ultimate goal is for these services to be consumed by other applications, not only this one. So we wanted to make sure that it was compatible with things like Flash, Utilities, Silverlight, okay. um, anything like that. Okay. So we, we actually sim uh, made it a little bit simpler than normal because if we use WCF or something that actually requires a, uh, a little bit stricter or tighter uh, calculation of um, data, transfer, it would become a little bit too complex, so we try to keep it as simple as possible. So is this actually a web service or is this a REST API? It's actually um, a web service in the way that it receives requests in an XML format and it just responds back. There's no, um, there's no front end, you don't see um, a WSDL, like a traditional web service, uh -huh. but everything else be behind that, it's a whole lot like a web service. So how, like a web service. okay, so if, if I was a another developer that was going to consume this without mm -hmm. the wisdom, how do I how do I actually engage your services? You well, we have um, documentation that shows you what the APIs are on the calls and what the packets would be received and sent back. Okay. So you'd have to actually look at it. It wouldn't be something that you can directly connect to it. Uh -huh. You'd have to know what what the request is. Do you have any handcrafted wisdom that you just give the developers to actually? Uh, no, not at this time. We're planning on um, expanding the services and add a lot more features. Ah. Um, and that's one of them to be able to also connect to it in a different way, a variety of different ways. And also to be able to request the response. Right now, the response is returns in XML. The ultimate goal is to be able to return the responses in a myriad of formats. Right. So um, from, a, from a services perspective, given that this application can run in, in what I would refer to as cache mode, meaning I'm not connected to the internet, right. so you must have both like real-time services and sort of asynchronous background feed services. Is that how it works? The application should keep track of everything that it does, or mm -hmm. it keeps track of everything that it does when it's offline. Mm -hmm. So in the offline mode, it knows that um, this set, set of events happen. There are certain things that you cannot do offline. Um, for example, you can't, the searching is limited. Um, you can add items to your particular recipe box, for example. Well, you can do it, but it won't do, do it until you connect back on, online. So it caches just the request, and then once the application knows that it's connected to the internet one more time, then it sends everything in, and it catches back up, and then everything is synchronized. So now, from a recipe perspective, given that I'm probably not calling the website for every recipe I need, those are getting downloaded somehow or trickled mm -hmm. down to me. Is that a web service invocation, or is that like a background service that the application is running to be pulling that down? The application, when it starts, it starts retrieving some automatically in the background uh, asynchronously. Okay. So you won't you won't see all the uh, recipes available when you first load, unless you start doing searches, and then it starts grabbing everything that it can okay. that you're that you're requesting. Um, it is, some of it is user driven, but most of it is actually happening in the back end um, asynchronously. Uh, so the user wouldn't even notice that it's happening. Oh, and sure. then they store them, the recipe results locally for a limited set of time. And then once those uh, recipes expire or whenever that date has uh, passed beyond a day or two, whatever mm -hmm. it is, it actually calls our service again and requests to make sure that the recipe is fresh. So that the so items are the same. As what we have in our service. So how sophisticated are you? So for instance, you know, maybe I'm, I'm busy and I'm, I'm just absolutely in love with this app and I'm downloading and cooking stuff like, a, like, a, like gangbusters. Uh, 
your recipe expires. Now, I've got it in my recipe box. Mm -hmm. Is the app sophisticated enough to go, okay, hold it, Todd has this one in his recipe box. I don't want to just sort of nuke it and have it go away. Is, is, is the app sophisticated enough to know to keep that one around? For? Yes. I mean, the, the items in your recipe box will always be there. Mm -hmm. um, if the recipe had changed at all, it, it would be reflected over with the new recipe box. Okay. But it, the recipe box actually gets stored in our server, so it gets sent to, a, to our systems. Mm -hmm. So any of that data will always be ah. available. You know, and then also it communicates with BettyCocker.com. So if you add an item to your recipe box and then you navigate to BettyCocker.com, mm -hmm. that item will be in your recipe box at Betty Crocker. Right. Now, what if, what, now what if I'm at home and I'm using this, right? And I, I love the app, so I'm over at Grandma's house, right? And I install it on Grandma's house and I log in with my user ID. Mm -hmm. Does, do I get all the same stuff I had on my machine at home at Grandma's house now? Um, well, not immediately. I mean, your, your personal items that are related to you, like a recipe box items or notes that you add to a, to yep. a, a recipe, mm -hmm. those will be there. But it still trickles the recipes down when it first, the first time it gets installed. Okay. So un until, you know, until those, those sure, recipes will get loaded, you won't, you know, it won't be identical, but it should be pretty close. So, so the app is designed to support the fact that I'm there, and then when Grandma logs in, She's obviously got her own preferences, right. and that's maintaining throughout. Right, and it knows that when that you logged in and you were the person that you know that is at this time of the week you log out and come back, um, you log back in as grandma, and then it will know that it gets to you a different set of items, you know, recipe box items, oh. notes, so things like that. Okay, so now from a from a technology perspective, so the services are being served up via IIS or right. Okay, yeah, IIS seven actually in this case. Okay, cool. Is that, is that running on Windows Server 2008 R2 or mm -hmm. is that 2000? Um, I'm not 100 percent. Is it R2 on this one? I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not sure. I, I would expect it to be, but I'm not 100 percent sure. Okay, no, no fair. That, that's more of our architecture team, so it becomes a little bit more beyond my scope. Sure. So when you're retrieving those recipes, you're probably calling another set of services inside of, of Betty Crocker's infrastructure. Right. We the public recipe service actually talks to other internal recipes, and that's all done through our internal communication via WCF. Ah, okay. So, so yeah, so we try to keep the exterior stuff that, that was exterior facing as simple as possible. That's why we're using plain XML. Yeah. But internally, we use it totally for all our communications. Okay. So how long did it take you to develop this infrastructure? Well, this is actually, um, this has been going on for years because we have, we built things on top of it. I mean, the original recipe, the original recipe storage system uh, and image system has been around with our company for a long time. Mm -hmm. But how about this particular API? These are all brand new. So, so. so Six months, three um, months, so long. I would say next week, maybe. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> so it only That's took you two weeks to write? I don't know. Oh, okay, yeah. okay, okay. So, I mean, how long did it take you once you sort of you decided, okay, we're going to do this? You know, we put together a team and we implemented. I'm just curious. Um, it became, um, it, it got kind of piggybacked and all the, you know, with all the items that we were building along. So I think altogether it's been about a year since we've been working on this whole design and putting everything together to make sure that you know that the the final goal was to be able to send back the recipe results. So this is a really a good true services architecture, yeah. ultimately designed to be consumable from a variety of different systems. But this mm -hmm. is sort of your flagship first application that consumes. Correct. It. Yeah. Great. Well, thanks very much. Thank you. Oh,